Welcome to Adapting Plus. This is Pediatric Concept, another episode regarding our ultimate English review. These are small, bite-sized information. First question, one of the typical questions you see all the time. You have to master this. What do you do regarding toys you give to kids? What do you do regarding play? What do you do? They are very, very important. But it's very systematic if you know the key. Always go with the buzzword in the question. What is the most appropriate toy to provide to help meet developmental needs? They never tell they there was no information about who they're talking about, but we're talking about poor and uh, toy. What is the problem? Two year old. So two year old, you gotta put them in the group, right? You can put them in the group, and then when you put them in the group, you know what to do for them. Two-year-old, at this stage, they are in a sensory motor and then pre-operative stage. So they learn by motor skills and then creativity. Which of this will provide motor skills? They don't have fine motor skills. Fine motor skills, then you can color things. These are for uh, early preschool ages uh, kids. Building blocks um, is for adult. It is 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 designed to improve your motor skills, right? Skills and and creativity, and these are very good for two year old. A small puzzle, maybe older, a little bit tod toddler, may be able to do that. These kind of things, and staff animal will provide comfort for the two year old, but it does not provide any developmental needs so for fine model we got to pick coloring for just a gross model skills as you learn we have to build building block so building block is the best answer for this based on the age so if you need more have a growth and developmental uh, video you can watch When it came to vaccination, it's the same strategy. You have to look at it and based on the infant age, that's what they can receive. Which vaccine should the infant receive during this visit? The nurse is providing teaching to the parents of a four-month-old infant about return immunization. Which one should the kid receive? The way I learn immunization is the age. From 12 months going to everything changes. You start to get really big guns like varicella, MMR, right? Those are the key and uh, uh, hepatitis A. Apart from that, if you below, you should have got DTAP, you should have got uh, uh, polio, you guys, you should have got inf uh, uh, influenza because those are really early things that the kid can get infection. You should have got your rotavirus. So based on the, uh, the information, you can see that MMRI will take this out. This also have varicella and MMRI will go. Another one, MMRI, varicella, and uh, hepatitis A usually giving those are the ones, 12 to 15, 15 months. So those are gone. Therefore, we left with what? Number one is our right answer based on uh, the schedule that I discussed with you. Okay, so that's how you do that. Number three. What is the nurse's best response? A nurse is caring for a child with the throat of falling. The child suddenly squats during play. Think about it, it's a content. The throat of falling, squatting during play. Why is the kid doing that? He's playing, he's exerting himself. All of a sudden, he's in a squatting mode. What will you do? Encourage the client to stand up and walk, administer oxygen and call for help. Allow the child to remain in the squatting position. Place the child in the prone position. Think about it. What do you do when the tetralogy of fully kid is in a squatting position? He's doing that because he's being taught to improve blood flow and prevent shunting. He's having, having excessive shunting and he's hypoxic. So in order to prevent that, he's going to squat. What do you need to do? Keep the kid in the right, that position. Same thing, if the kid, they tell you the kid is having text spell, he's doing exercise and he's turning blue, tell the kid to squat. This kid is already squatting. What do you do? Allow the child to remain in the squatting position. 
and Mr. Oxygen and call for help is not going to help. He's doing the right thing. Encourage the child to stand up. No, keep him in the right position. Place the child in the prom. You're not going to be doing favor to that kid. What is the priority action? What? A, a nurse is caring for a two-year-old with what? High fever, infection, drooling, buzzword, and a strider. The child is sitting upright and leaning forward. He's having airway issue. Drooling and strider is a bad combination with a high fever, probably a pregotitis. What do you want to do? You don't put anything in their mouth. Assess the child's throat using a tongue depressor. Wrong answer. Administer prescribed antipyretic. It would take care of the fever, but that's not what is making the kid sick. It's the drooling and strider. So it's in the tripod position, sitting up and leaning forward. Prepare to intubate and notify the provider. Right answer. Nothing in their mouth. Therefore, you should not obtain any caution. Three is your right answer. Which statement indicate the parents need further in teaching? Further, further, further teaching. That means you need to correct them. The nurse is teaching the parent of a five-year-old child about liquid medication administration. Liquid medication administration. Five-year-old child. What would you do? I will give a. I will use a household teaspoon to measure the dose. It's inaccurate. I will give the medication at the same time of the day. It's good. I will double check the label before giving the medication. Verification. I will keep the medication out of reach of my child. Safety. Therefore, inadequate measurement is wrong answer. That's number one. And I need further teaching. What is the priority nursing action? A three-year-old child arrives in the emergency department with what partial thickness burn to the chest and the arm. Whenever somebody got a burn injury, always think about the airway, especially with the chest. You don't know probably there was there was airway injury. So the first thing we do, pain medication is not there, apply steroid dressing is not there, assess for airway involvement. That's not one. That's what is going to kill. If you have chest wound, sometimes you may have inability to uh, have a chest rise that can affect your respiratory too. So before you start fluid and everything, assess for the airway. Which intervention is most important? That means all of this is important, but it's one that is the most important. And this is caring for a child experiencing tonic clonic seizure. What is the problem with the seizure? You're having excessive contraction and due to abnormal brain activity, and this may lead to hypoxia, and the brain will have an oxic brain injury. We don't want you to aspirate in this situation. Tonic clonic, you have contraction, and then eight, and then contraction. You can bang your head, you can bite your toes, to your muscle will uh, contract, and that can make you aspirate if you keep the kid in the wrong position. So the best thing is to not to restrain them, right? Place the child in the, on the side is the best answer. Giving them oxygen during seizure is not going to help. It's going to choke them. Whatever oxygen device you're going to deliver, they can use it to uh, tie themselves up. Nothing go in their mouth during seizure. During seizure, you just wait and protect them from injury. Place them on the left lateral side to prevent aspiration after that then you can assess them this is the end of it seven questions con con concept based on pediatric i know you learned something if you like it subscribe to adapt and take care of yourself and bye